Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Stone Busters Taste Challenge. We have from 1906, 1906, Palo Viejo. Uh, Ronda Puerto Rico, rum produced by Barcelo Marcus. Got to fix the spelling on that and company. San Juan, Puerto Rico, 80 proof and, and bottled in Illinois. Deerfield, Illinois by Munson Shaw. This is a one liter. It was six dollars and ninety nine cents for this one liter bottle at the Bev at the at uh, what's the name of that store? The beverage store on U.S. Highway one ninety business route eastbound in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now I went by the beverage store two times since all this. You know what business started? And it was closed. I don't know if it's closed for good. And it had been around for a long, long time. Great store, great liquor store, but victims of the of the heavy hand of government. Great store. But anyway, I, at least I bought that. The competitor, Albertson Silver Rum. Albertson's founded in 1939. This is a half size bottle, $2.99. So five ninety eight for a regular size bottle, five ninety eight. So he's about the same price point. This is uh, produced in the United States Virgin Islands and bottled in Kentucky by County Line Distillers. Tanisha Lafonine. Oh Lord. Okay. All righty. Now. Um, what can I say? I will I will buy another bottle of this at Albertson's if I go back to that store in Hammond, Louisiana, also on U.S. Highway 190. So both of these are bought on, along the same United States Highway route. Doesn't mean much, but that is where they were purchased. Also, both of them are on the eastbound side of the road, eastbound side, four-lane highway. Okay. Oh, well also known as Florida Boulevard. You say Florida in Baton Rouge? Not just in Baton Rouge either, in some other parts of Louisiana, it's called Florida Boulevard because those parishes in Louisiana, those parishes, East Baton Rouge Paris, Parish, West Feliciana, East Feliciana, Livingston Parish, St. Helena, Tangipahoa, Washington Parish, and St. Tammany Parish were all once part of Florida. Florida, most people don't realize, used to be two provinces. Provinces. There was West Florida, which ran from Baton Rouge to the Apalachicola River which I think is where east and west time, uh, east and central time zones are divided. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the Apalachicola River is where the east, eastern and central time zones are divided. So that's east and west, Florida. And then from there, east to, well, you know, St. Augustine and all of that was east Florida, two different Floridas. Now, east, west Florida was cut up. Part of it joined what we call Florida today. Then another piece, Alabama, another piece, Mississippi, and another piece, Louisiana. But notice the line, the northern border. It's the same line. It runs from the Mississippi River all the way to that. I guess it's the Apalachicola River. Straight line. Straight line. Okay. So I was born in the Florida parish is what they call Florida parish. Former Florida. It would have been kind of cool if they'd have kept Florida that big, right? Stretching from the Mississippi River, one big state, huh? That would be, huh, 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 huh? That'd be cool, huh? All right. So 
So here's the Albertsons. Albertsons, the company founded in 1939. Huge grocery chain that we're just talking about them on the radio, something about trying to keep the people safe in the store or something, but they were all open. I don't know. I can't, couldn't remember the whole thing, but it was, there was a report on television about Albert's sons. Don't think they, st I don't think Albertson's rum, silver rum or gold, or if they have overproof or if they have spice still in production. I think they made a lot. They had it in warehouses and they're trying to sell it off. All those Albertsons brands have been rebranded as other names that can be sold across their huge grocery chain conglomerate. Jewel Osco, Amigos, uh, or Albertsons, Super Value, um, United Groceries. Uh, it goes so many. Just look at their website. It'll show you all of them. And it's probably some close to you that you didn't know was part of it. And um, the Albertsons brandy, no longer around. They got... D.W. Anders, D.W. Anders, but you'll see that at different um, affiliated stores. The Albertsons rum, I think, was simply rebranded as King's Square, King's Square, which wouldn't be associated with any particular grocery chain. Now, I did see King's Square sold at Savannah Discount. Now, I don't know why a private label would be sold there. But um, maybe the warehouse made a deal. I don't know. I don't know how strict it is. I've seen Walmart brands sold at other stores like Caliber. So the trademark says Caliber is owned by Walmart Apollo. That's the official name of Walmart, apparently, in legal, in legal papers. Walmart Apollo Properties or whatever it is called. Maxwell, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Maxwell from R the Russian Federation. He's in Russia. I don't know if they get rum in Russia. I assume they... I assume they do. Now they're both clear, what they call silver. They look kind of like silver, you know. I say they look like water, but they don't really. They actually do look silver. And gold, silver and gold. Now, when you see the gold rums, gold, they don't really look gold. They more look like tan. <laughs> tan. Now, you might be asking this question, what, what rums do you have coming up next? <clears throat> Maybe you're not asking that question, but I'll tell you anyway. Well, as far as taste challenges, I want to do Albertsons against Captain Morgan White. And I found it strange that Captain Morgan never had a white rum until 2014. I said, this is really weird, you know, but it, that's a trademark 2014. I mean, I've, I've found numerous strong evidence that it was 2014. It clearly was 2014. And I'm thinking Captain Morgan's been around since the 1930s. And you tell, uh, no, I believe it was 1946. So that's still a long time, right? Over um, 70 years. And they never had a white rum. Ah, well, guess what they did. I was looking at old magazine ad advertisements. And there was an ad from, looked like about 1973. And it was called Morgan White. Morgan White and below Captain Morgan rums from Seagram's 80 proof white rum. I said, I knew it. I knew there was a Captain Morgan White. There's no way that company would have operated over 70 years and not had a white rum, you know, clear silver rum, but it did. It was just called Morgan White. And then I guess when uh, Diageo bought it from, um, Seagram's, when Seagram's went out of business in 2000, the company got split up. I guess some kind of way they had stopped making a white rum. And then maybe somebody at Diageo said, like me, like, this is crazy. Why are we not making a white rum? What's wrong with y'all? You know, that's a big part of the market, man. So they must have said, OK, blah, blah, blah. Captain Morgan White, which you see everywhere, 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 everywhere. You don't see Barcelo Marcus. I mean, you don't see Paolo Viejo everywhere. No. And you don't see Albertsons rum almost anywhere. Uh, so that would be Thursday morning. I'm planning to do Albertsons versus um, Captain Morgan White. Thursday night, if we do fan, um, Thunder and Thursday, if we do Thunder and Thursday, I think we will. I don't know. I don't know. But if we do, uh, 
James P. Madonna was like reluctant to join because he he's taking medicine and he can't drink alcohol. So he feels out of place. Well, I, I can understand that. I would feel out of place, too. But I told him, I said, you always have things you want to say. So join. But he seemed to get frustrated last Thursday. Um, there was a lot of people joining. We had a big crowd of people and um, he didn't hang around too long and left abruptly. Like Eric, I said, oh, you're, you criticize Eric for just leaving and then you do it. So anyway, <laughs> um, I don't know. If we don't do Thunder Thursday, it's no, no, no bother to me. And in fact, I'll just save the taste challenge till Saturday morning for Dawn Busters and do uh, Albertsons versus the Ron Pontalba white, which I got for $6.99 a liter. Ron Pontalba. It's pretty good white rum. The gold isn't isn't too good. Just tastes like rubbing alcohol, really. But um, <clears throat> somebody told me, oh, yeah, like some town out west. I think he said he was in um, Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, Texas, which is sort of like a desert area, semi-desert. Well, from what I could tell, it looked like a desert to me. Of course, when you live in this part of the country, every, a lot of things look like a desert. But uh, he said that's real common in all the bars, the well rum. They reach down and make a rum cocktail. He said that's what they use, rum pantalba. I said, well, it just goes to show you. Okay. Don't have to worry about the color here because they both look silver. Can I tell them apart? Um, I think it's going to be really tough. Even though one's from the United States Virgin Islands, one's from Puerto Rico, one is from one company, one's from another, no age statement. But I mean, they're probably very similar. You only get these strange anomalies with bizarre products like Ron Rio, which tastes like rancid sugarcane stalks and weed killer. Now, I mean, I don't think it's supposed to taste like that. I need to go back to... It's been two years since I've been to the uh, super discount store on Louisiana Highway 47 in Chalmette. Yeah, St. Bernard is one of those parishes where they don't allow liquor sales in Walmart or gas stations. You got to go to a liquor store. But all around, you can go anywhere and buy liquor, you know, gas station. Grocery store, just depends, but there that's their parish. Saint Bernard, Saint Benoit, as they pronounce it. Have you had that Copperberg fruit lager? No, I never even heard of it. D H D seven three thirty two. Good morning, Ron says young Mr. Jazz. Good morning to you. So uh they stopped selling Albertson's rum here in Arizona. Yeah, well, they probably just ran out of back stock. I noticed they had about thirty six bottles on the shelf in the customer service over there, about 36 bottles, just a, from a quick glance, look like about three dozen. Oh, they probably still have some left. Got the Navy and the uh, silver for, for $2.99. Yeah, I'll buy it because I want to use it in the taste challenges. It's, it's a credible product. If it was some trash, I'd just finish the bottle and let it go. You know what I mean? I would just say, forget it. But no, this has actually been performing quite well, kind of like the Albertsons American blended whiskey. So I say, well, it, it's worth keeping in the taste challenges. It can hold its own against uh, um, common brands. So I used to drink the spice rum. Huh. I was so unfamiliar with Albertson's um, liquor until five years ago that I have really no experience with it. Except I bought the Albertson's Canadian blended whiskey. Very good product. The American blended whiskey, tolerable. You know, like most American blended whiskeys, tolerable. Uh and the Albertsons rum here, and the Albertsons brandy, which was actually the best of the whole lot, I think. I think the Albertsons brandy was better than all the rest. Okay. All the rest of what I'm saying, the Albertsons products. Uh, this is spicy in the nose, wood, charred oak, um, light molasses, but it's like all put together just right. Not too sure if they sell it in America. I know they sell it here in Britain. Yeah, a lot of British stuff we can't get. A lot of stuff we get, the British can't get. A lot of scotch. <laughs> Believe This is a true story. We get a lot of scotch that they can't get in Scotland. Like you can. And Scottish people tell me we can't get that. So it was made in your country. He said it might be made in our country, but we can't get it. And then Canadians tell me 
Uh, oh, I never seen that Canadian uh, whiskey. And I'll tell them, what's well, common here? We can't get it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's strange. But on the other hand, on the other hand, there are American liquor brands that we can't get. We can't get. Blanton's single barrel. There's a perfect example. Blant you say, well, you all get that. Y'all get Blanton's single barrel. Yeah, we do. But only that. We don't get all the other varieties. There's like Blanton's Gold, Blanton's Green Label. Uh, just look at the website and it'll tell you. European sales only. Asian, Asia only. I'm um, like, oh, great. Travel discount. Travel like you can buy it at the airport only, but you can only buy it if you're leaving the U.S. So, I mean, it doesn't do you any good. Uh, there's a perfect example. There's a little creaminess in this, kind of like you get with those cream wines, like the the the, the Manischewitz cream wines. You say cream wine. I don't know. It just, it's there. It's pretty complex, so I think it must be the uh, Palo Viejo on the market since 1906. It's their version of a luxury scotch. Okay, uh, we get something called Night Cider. Oh, I don't like cider. 8.4, but that's me. Buchanan's is really popular with the Mexican people. That's right. It's very big in Latin America. The smooth flavors of Buchanan's blended scotch seem to sit well with the Latin palate. Sits well with my palate, too, and I'm only partly Latino. I mean, not by language, but by heritage, French, all, fran all français. You say French is not Latino. Yeah, it is because France, French is a Romance language. It's a Latin language, Latin-based language, Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, and Romanian, all those Southern European. I was going to say Mediterranean. Of course, Romania is on the uh, Black Sea. But remember, the Romans ruled that country, Dacia, Dacia. Romania. I hear my second cousins, they speak Romanian because they are, they grew up in Romania as missionaries and uh, with their father and mother. And so I hear them speaking Romanian sound like Italian to me. This one is very spicy and um, charcoalish and, and oaky also and the light molasses, but why not that cream aspect? Maybe a little more bite from the charcoal in the nose, but honestly, I was wondering, what's this big diesel truck? That's that one next door, that Ford uh, Power Stroke. Um, they're not the same, but I, I can't by nose tell which is which. Sorry, I just can't. Well, same price point, same very difficult to find availability. They're just like the same, but they're not the same. But you know what I mean? The same type thing, which doesn't mean bad, does not mean bad. I mean, they're not going to be up to the standard of Bacardi, I don't think. Yeah. See, this one has a little of that rubbing alcohol flavor, you know, like just alcohol. Now, you don't drink rubbing alcohol, right? But. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the way it tastes is like the way you would expect rubbing alcohol to smell. Just like alcohol, like standard, basic. Not bad, not bad. And to be fair, these things are not produced for sipping and taste challenging. They're produced for cocktails only. And for people that don't want to spend a lot of money. I get that. I recognize that. My father was like that. He would have parties for like Mardi Gras parades the Sunday before Mardi Gras because they used to have a parade that would pass in front of our house, Crew de Mon, Crew of the World, Crew de Mon. And uh, they would buy all kind of, but they would buy, you know, Winn-Dixie brand, rum, but people didn't mind. You know? Especially since it was free. But, uh, and Winn-Dixie, that's all made by uh, Sazerac. County line, uh, the founders company, which is other uh, France is definitely a Latin nation. That's right, but people don't perceive that, you know. Yeah, I prefer beer over lager. Cider makes me feel very sick after a few pints compared to lager and beer. 
I drank some lager back in the nineties when I started drinking beer, but I didn't like not lager. I mean, cider started drinking some cider, but I said, at first I liked it a little bit. And then I said, I don't like this. When I'm finished with the six pack, I'm never going to buy it again. And I never did. I said, uh. and then about eight years later, my daughter was saying, no, 18 years later, let's do a, a, a cider tasting we did a video with all kind of different ciders that she brought over they were fine but i didn't like any of them i said i don't like this stuff it's not against the brand i just don't like the product i don't like cider i was like Bleh. you know i'm sorry and i'm disappointed her, i guess but she said i don't mind you know you you said you didn't like to start with light is probably my favorite lager peronium already if you get any of that yeah Oh, Coors Light. Yeah, we get it all. Coors Light. It's a different one than England. Great Britain, though. Peroni Nastro Azuro is the only one we get. We love it. It's good. Biro Moretti. Yeah, that's a really good one. We used to get Biro Moretti La Rosa, the Doppelbach. It's a red, a red Doppelbach. But uh, I hadn't seen that in a couple of years. Well, I used to love that thing. Ooh, ooh. One of the best beers in the world, in my opinion. La Rasa, the red. Bira Moretti, the red. Great product. The red label. Oh, yeah, that was just... I think it was a twist cap. <laughs> I think I remember Bira Moretti was a twist cap. Then it went to the Pride, but... Oh, well. Quality, who wins? It's a tie. Uh, I was going to say, oh, uh, well, maybe this one... Has less of that alcohol attack, but it kind of has it. <laughs> it kind of has it to um, basically has it. All right, so are these worth buying? Really? Yeah, I would say so. Now, if you're real finicky and you have a root, a extreme, like developed ability to taste super high quality and silver white clear rums, you could probably detect a lot of faults with these. But I'm not an expert, and I don't have a great ability to do that. So I just, to me, they're like, oh, those are good. Yeah. And I've had people tell me, basically, like, you're so dumb because you think everything's good. Well, it doesn't make a person dumb or unintelligent. Maybe they just have a tendency to like a lot of things, you know. I watch some beer reviews. They hate everything. No problem. He just... Every beer they try, they say, oh, it's nasty, or oh, I don't like it, or this is no good, or I'd never drink it again. I get the feeling I don't like beer, but it's fine. You know, they're trying it. Doesn't make any difference. But uh, do I like most of the stuff I try? Yeah. Why is that? Because I'm a bad taster? Maybe. But probably because most of what's made is good. You know, it's pretty good. You watch some channels, like everything's horrible. Like everything is bad, especially if it's uh, mass produced. Like, if it's widespread, it's trash. The only beers they like or wine or liquor is, like, obscure things that nobody can get, you know, that have super exotic, strong, harsh flavors, you know, super high alcohol. The, all the uh, liquor has to be, like, barrel-proof, 137-proof. All the wine has to be, you know, unusual. The beer has to be produced in only minute quantities, 14% barrel age, you know, some or a company you never heard of that you can't get. Then they just brag on how awesome it is, you know. But anything that that anything that's available to any kind of decent extent, it's garbage, you know. They say it tastes like glue, it tastes like sewage, whatever. I mean, I say, oh yeah, okay. David Cassidy, greetings, Mr. Ron. Greetings to you. Now, as far as the obscurity angle, these are obscure. Oh, that's a little sugar there. <laughs> Got a little sugar there. But then, of course, the, the comment would be, yeah, but it's it's uh, inexpensive, so it's trash. It's rot gut. That's what people like to say. I hear them say that a lot. That's rot gut. 
But actually, rot gut comes from rum. That terminology comes from rum itself. And it really has nothing. No, the word rot gut has no actual relationship to cheap products. It's just become that. They use that now to uh, discuss inexpensive products. But what rot gut really meant was that in the 1700s, like 1780s, 90s, early 1800s, people didn't drink water too much. It was so dangerous, you know? And so they didn't understand microbiology. So, but they understood that if you drank rum, you didn't get sick, but if you drank water, you could. So people would just be farmers, right? 90% of Americans were farmers when the country first started. Now it's less than 10%, but they'd be in the fields and they'd be taking shots of rum all day. Caribbean rum, taking shots. They would do this for decades. You know, what they're in, they would get cancer, you know, in their stomach, liver, pancreas, whatever, you know, sickness and all. So they call that rot gut. And the, and the, the rum, they call that rot gut. Why are you drinking that rot gut? Because if you're drinking, say, a bottle a day, it's probably what they were drinking as far as taking shots. And do it for 40 years, well, could be a problem. So that's the terminology. But 40 years of being alive was probably better than 14 years of dying and then dying because you drank water that was contaminated with cholera and everything else. I mean, water was so unsafe then. Uh, remember, Jesus turned water into wine. He didn't turn it into uh, filtered water. Um, I can't really tell these apart, all right? I don't want to sit here and try to say, well, let me just show you how great I am. No, I can't. I cannot tell them apart. I've had both of them. Look how much of the Palo Viejo I have had. I've had a good 25% of the bottle. But I don't know which is which. But I'll say they're both reasonably good. Not great. Not world class. I never had a world class rum. I'm almost sure. You know, I never had a world class rum. I've had some good ones. I've had some great ones, like the Bacardi Grand, uh, the Grand Reserva Diaz, the ten year age. That's a really mighty fine. But that is world class. I had the eight year age, which I loved. But I mean, I don't think that's world class. You say, well, you got to pay three, four hundred dollars a bottle of rum to get world class, right? I'm not going to do that. Oh, Glenn Morangy, I saw this last thing I'm going to say. So this is a tie. I'll check the the glass just for the sake of it. Okay, so this was the Albertsons, and this was the Palo Viejo. I was kind of leaning that way. I was leaning that way, but I, you say that's easy to say after it's over, right? Right. That's why I didn't say it during the the challenge because I didn't feel like I really knew it. Um, I went to International Market Saturday. I forgot to tell my friend David this. I knew he'd have been amazed. They had Glen Morangy, Glen Morangy, the Scotch single malt. It was the 1974 edition from 1974. They call it Glen Morangy 1974, whatever. In a case, beautiful cut glass, everything. $10,999. And what? 99 cents? Now that's a negotiable product. You know, you go in there, they charge in $10,999 for one 750 milliliter bottle. But maybe you could go to international market and say, hey, you got that for $10,995. $10,000, let's say $11,000. Want to cut a deal? You might say, for you, for you, $9,000, $9,000, my friend, $9,000. And you might say, $9,000, never. I'll never pay $9,000. Oh, well, you got to get out. Get out of my store. I'm leaving. Bye. You, and you say, I'm walking out. Damn, I bring down damnation on this store. And then you're walking out the door. My friend, 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 my friend. Ah, I had a long day. 
Have you had a long day? For you, I sell it for 8,000. 8,000. I'll take it for 8,000. Ah, ah, let me tell you, I can make you very good deals. So then you give them $8,000 for the bottle. Now, that's what you could do with liquor that costs that much. You know what I'm saying? You can start negotiating. Uh, they'll take they'll take the deal, man. Okay, last call, and then we're off the air. But that was, a, I just couldn't believe it. I never saw a liquor for $11,000. But there it was. I thought I was seeing something I saw for five at Sazerac House. Single malt scotch. Oh, no. Blended scotch from 1969. The last drop, 50 year aged. 5,000 bucks or best offer. I added that for best offer. They didn't say that, but you know that's the case that they gave me. But when I saw $11,000, I said, woo we Okay. Uh, Coors Light is probably my favorite lager, Peroni or Moretti, if you get any of that. Okay. Do you have something called Carlsberg Export over there? Yeah, but it's called Carlsberg here. It's just called called Carlsberg. 5% even. 5% Carlsberg. And then we get the elephant. Seven and a half. Sorry. 7%. 7% elephant. Elephant. Greetings. Are you keen on gin or not? I'm not keen on gin. I don't like gin. When I drink gin, then I start writing crazy stuff on the internet. And later on, I say, who wrote all this on my Facebook page? And then I'm like, oh, that was me. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Anyway, so my daughter likes gin. They, they're into gin. They do gin cocktails, gin this, gin that, gin everything. They talk about gin all day long. <sighs> I've had good gins and some not so good ones. But uh, no, it's just mm -hmm. getting sick would be the major downside living back in those days. Right. Pat Clement, Clement, Clemons, Clements, Clements, Clemo. I like Kraken. I've heard about Kraken. I know about Kraken, the Kraken, but I never had it. Plantation Jaimaka is an excellent rum, says David. Plantation Jaimaka. Oh, I never had it. DHD, ha ha ha. Yeah, I either drink lager, lagers or vodka mixed with soda or Jack Daniels and, and Coke. Uh, Jack and Coke, uh, that's one of the most popular things around in the world today, as we all know. And then what's the other most popular thing around the world? Crown and Coke. Crown, Royal and Coke. And I told my friend David uh, Saturday, I said, boy, we ought to do a, a Crown Royal taste challenge. He was made a bad face. He made a bad face. I said, what's the problem? I don't even like that. I said, you know, that's the most popular whiskey in Louisiana. And he said, that's because drink it. I said, yeah, I know, but a lot of people drink it. He said, they love it. I said, well, I mean, you know, people like stuff. What's the big problem? We're like, what's the, what's the complaint? <laughs> but anyway, he wasn't telling me anything I didn't know. Anyhow, I know they drink it, but um, and Hennessy, but I don't care. I mean, I'm not like fixated on like uh, I'm not fixated on who drinks what. I'm just fixated on is it good? I can't testify to Crown Royal because I never had it except for one little tiny taste. At the Knights of Columbus Hall once. Seemed fine. You know, I said, well, well this seems fine. I don't know why people are downgrading it. You know, Crown has an apple. Yes, I've seen that. Just saw it. I saw it just yesterday. They have caramel. Oh, they have so many flavors. And then they'll run these special flavors, you know, from time to time. Apple all the time. But then you see caramel. Uh, the Texas mesquite, which is flavored with that smoke, like to be like Texas mesquite smoked uh, thing. What have I seen? Pecan. I don't know. They run specials. I'm not into the flavors, so, but I don't know. But I'm going to try Crown Royal. I'm going to try the, the Black Label, the Bourbon Mash. Well, I'm going to try all of it. I'm going to make the meat. I'm going to make all the meats. You know, I'm going to try them. Never hear of a seven and sevens anymore. 
Uh, my father said back in 1975, around that time, I asked him, I said, you ever heard of Seven Crown, Seagram Seven Crown? He said, who hasn't heard of that? <sighs> he said, everybody used to drink seven and seven. And then my friend Tom Jones, he was born two years after my father. He was like, yeah, seven and seven. Everybody used to drink that in 1975, 76, when they would go to like Fat City and Metairie or go out. That was just like routine. Everybody drank that. <laughs> Had, yes, I am a Knights of Columbus member, third degree, not a fourth degree. I'm the recorder in my council. Have you ever, which is a, a job you don't want. Okay, have you ever had the famous grouse? No, but I've seen it and I want to try it. Pat Clements says Seag Seagram's, right, Seagram's Seven Crown. Okay, so it's not like what it used to be 40 years ago is popular, but it's still in the top five or top 10. I know it's in the top 10, but I think it's still in the top five best-selling whiskeys in America, Seagram Seven Crown. They just don't promote it. I guess they don't have to. They just figure, why spend money on advertising when people are going to buy it? We could just lay it out there and it's going to sell by the millions every month. So why even advertise? They do a little bit of Facebook stuff. Like they got a Facebook page and they put these photos, you know, but, uh, When's the last time you saw a Seagram Seven Crown advertisement in a, in a magazine? Yeah, right. You haven't. Same thing with VO. They don't promote that. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, shoot. Every Sports Illustrated magazine you ever saw in your life had a VO commercial advertisement, you know. But they just say, oh, stick it out there. They'll buy it. And they do. And. There's VO, Seagram's VO, and one of the top selling Canadian whiskeys with no promotion. But that didn't happen with Schlitz beer that did it. It went from being the second best selling beer 44 years ago in America, second best selling beer 44 years ago, to not even in the top 100. Why? No promotion, no ads, no money, <laughs> no money. I asked my, I remember riding in a, in a truck car, a van, a van, one of those big 40 Conaline vans, like around 1984, 85. I remember driving that interstate 10 and asking my father, what are, whatever happened to Schlitz? He's like, Schlitz, that's a beer. I, I looked at him like he was crazy. I said, what? He said, yeah, 30 million, can't be wrong. I thought he's crazy. He's going crazy. You know, Schlitz, that's like, I grew up with Schlitz, the bathing suits, the bikinis, the floppy caps, the blankets, Schlitz here, Schlitz there. I don't know. I couldn't understand it, but he was thinking of Schlitz malt liquor anyway, which is, was, not is, was popular. I have to get off of this, uh, but people like to discuss. It also seems as if you don't have alternatives of your product. Nobody gets interested. Eventually, marketing dies. Hmm. Yeah, but there's no alternatives. Oh, yeah, Seagram's. There is the apple, Seagram's apple and Seagram's, what is it, honey or Seagram's seven crown caramel. Some, they have them. They may be more than what they show on the website. There's definitely the apple. Yeah, and that's pretty common. Yeah, there's no VO alternatives. Well, there's VO gold. Oh, I shouldn't say there's none because I'll turn around and see VO Apple tomorrow and say, uh oh, that's an antique laughing out loud. Yeah, no joke. Oh, OK. So they do very well. Schaefer beer was another one. Oh, I used to buy Schaefer suitcases. 1998, 1998, I would buy suitcases of Schaefer for seven ninety eight, seven dollars ninety eight cents. And, and it, you remember it would say the weekender, the weekender had that big glass with the foam coming out. I say, boy, it makes you want to drink it. Oh, crown vanilla. That's right. Forgot about that. Uh, but anyway, let me get off of this. Um, I never tried any of those flavored whiskeys, to tell you the truth. Everybody is now into the peanut butter, the... Um, Mm, whatever they call it. Wasn't there a Seagram's Canadian whiskey? 
there was and there is. <laughs> what do you mean was? <laughs> there's more than one too. There's the 83, there's the, there's many Seagram's Canadian whiskeys, but they're not owned by Seagram's anymore because Seagram's went out of business, but people bought the brand. Yeah, oh yeah, many, many. That's where Seagram started in Canada, VO, right. But it's not just VO, there's many. Yeah, you're right, VO, but that's not the only one. There's more than VO. There's many Seagram's whiskeys from Canada. The Weekender. Oh yeah, that thing was a jewel, a jewel. I recorded the screwball. Oh, that was it. Screwball, screwball. My daughter told me, we were drinking that this weekend. Boy, that's so good. I said, well, she's into the flavored stuff. I'll probably have it out tomorrow. Bottle and bond. Okay. I won't watch it because I never watch videos for products I have not had. Nothing personal. I never watch products. I never watch videos for products I've not tried because I can't relate to it. And some people will be offended. Like, why you didn't watch my video? I say, well, I can't. I never had that beer, you know, so I don't watch videos until I've had the product. Now, once I've had the product, I'll watch every video, every one. Might take me six hours, you know, but I'll watch them or at least listen to them like a radio show. Hunter Pipers. Uh, yes, I have bottles, bottles, three bottles of Hunter Pipers scotch. One of the best. Uh, yeah, probably is the best inexpensive three year age blended scotch on the market. That's a mm -mm, that's a winner. Yeah, to each his own, to sweet, just like smoked maple or liqueur, yeah. Oh, yeah, I bought many a case in the 80s, says David. Makes sense, no offense at all. I appreciate it. Guess what I saw Saturday? You know, pie hole, the flavored whiskey, the cherry pie, the apple pie. I was stunned. I said, oh, at international market, cherry pie, Pecan pie, pecan pie, or pecans, people say, or in Louisiana, they say pecans. We go and pick pecans. Pecans. I'm pretty sure A doesn't make a O-N sound on, like I'm stepping on the onto the platform, but that's what people say. I'm stepping on with a pecan. But uh, I said pecan pie, whiskey. Mm -mm -mm. Makes me so curious, but I wasn't paying $18. Thank you for watching this video production.